Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to today's episode where we will show you the newest features of the United Manufacturing Hub. With me is Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. <laughs> What is it that you do at the United Manufacturing Hub? Yeah, I'm one of the three co-founders of the United Manufacturing Hub. And as soon as you want to do something commercial with us, so get an enterprise license from us, I'm the one responsible. So from implementation through your complete life cycle, I'm, I'm responsible. So you have like problems on um, your manager asks you oh, what's about your your security strategy, what, is, uh, what are the SLAs that you can get from the United Manufacturing Hub. I'm the one that can give you the answers if you want. All right. So in this episode, we will talk about three new main features. The first one is the Getting Started Guide. Um, the second one is the MQTT Simulator, which came from the community, from Amin. And the third one is the, and I think this, this one is the most exciting one, the historian part. So let's get started with the first part, the Getting Started Guide. Yeah, let me just navigate through our Learn platform. Nice. I think I know where to click. Yeah, uh, so previously it was all hidden somewhere in the, in the guides, in the documentation, and was not easy to actually navigate through it. And we try to really simplify the journey that you have when going through with the United Manufacturing Hub. I think actually like simplifying the journey is also like a good point that we could bring up here. Like previously, I when I think back, like virtual machine installation was a preferred one and now we switched to K3D. Perhaps you can elaborate why we did this. Yeah, so still for production, we say, okay, let's take as much control. Um, let's try to standardize as much. So we have a re-standardized setup. So we still recommend the VM setup. Bar, but for development and testing, we heard also back from the community that it's quite hard to do it with virtual machines. Um, with the virtual box, for example, it's still quite difficult. Yeah, uh, especially just, the networking part. Is yeah, the networking part. Um, so we heard from the community the K3D method and the Minikube method, and we decided that we want to recommend the K3D installation uh, guide. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, and it's not... Also, I will be able to get it up with macOS, preferred or like required, and this is Windows 10, Windows 11. But I can skip then on Shoko and I installed K3D, kubectl, Helm. You all did it, uh, did it yeah. before? Yeah. So we are sure that it works. If not, you will not see this video here. <laughs> okay. Um, exactly. So let's then directly go into um, creating a cluster with K3D. So like I said, it would be how, cool. how did you install the K3D? Uh, if you didn't use Shoko, what did you do? I just Google it. So, like, as it's a Unix-based uh, um, operating system, it was quite easy to just install K3D macOS and then just follow the Linux commands and it ju just worked on macOS. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, cool. I actually brute-forced it. <laughs> There was no instruction for macOS and I just freestyled and it worked. Right. So, now what happens, so what K3D actually is, is it uses Docker And for, for each node, so for each virtual server of K3, K3S, it will create a separate Docker container. And these Docker containers are now created. So what you have is you have, you're using Docker, you're installing Docker containers, running K3S on it, uh, so Kubernetes, mm -hmm. and then inside of there, you're running again Docker containers. So, so, so okay, one moment. Let me, let me understand. So you're running K3D, which is a Docker container, which... Multiple uh, Docker containers. Multiple. So like I've then inside of Docker desktop, I can see then three K K3D containers. And then inside one of them are more Docker containers that are... One yeah, yeah, inside of there, there's Kubernetes running. And in Kubernetes, you typically install ah. microservices and Docker yeah, okay, containers. Yeah, got it. So like a Matroshka, Russian Matroshka. Puppet. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's really good for development, yep. uh, but please, please don't use it for production. You could, but you should not. <laughs> Okay, um, that I have done. Now I need to create the namespace. Ah, like I said, it would be cool if we have like a button besides. Uh, ah, yeah, uh, just a button to, to, to yeah, copy, copy paste. Yeah, it will save me like half a second. Namespace is created. Um, do I need to do this again? Be because I tried. I just just put it in. If it if you already did it, it will just throw. Mm -hmm. 
more warning. Yes. Yeah, it says it already exists. Let me let me update nevertheless. Nice. Really straightforward. When I'm thinking back, like Jeremy, two years back when we had this, uh, <laughs> we're still this Docker Compose stack where we had like one project where we needed to set up 10 stacks for like an Asian uh, customer. And it was oh. like an all nighter, three nights, just Docker Compose. And then it was running on like Rev Pies, I think they're called. It's like an industrial rugged version of a Raspberry Pi. And they are missing some uh, Python packages. It was, it was an. Oh, idea. yeah. Yeah. This is better. Uh, but but you still haven't installed it. The next command will yeah. actually install it. Yeah, but the, the journey feels good so far. Yeah, and that was basically it. It will throw out some warnings because Kubernetes is always throwing warnings. So um, if you now open Lens. Let, let me open open Lens. It will also actually... Ju um yeah, it should, should find it automatically because it's installed on my host system here. Yes, there it is. Now everything should be red, yes, or orange. Yeah, so if you take, at, at first this can look really dangerous. Oh my God, nothing is working, everything is burning. Why is everything orange or warning signs? This is normal when deploying something in Kubernetes. There are even more error messages. Um, what you have to do at the beginning is just be patient and just wait five, six, seven minutes um, until everything is finally set up. Because what? how does it work in the beginning? It will automatically start all microservices at the same time. And for example, Kafka might take a couple of minutes and the microservices, for that example, that publish data to Kafka, they can't find Kafka. So they're, sense, yeah. Yeah, so they're the, the panicking, um, but they will be restarted automatically. So, so you just throw everything like in one one basket and then just uh, yeah, let, let, let Kubernetes manage it. Yeah, let Kubernetes take, take, take care of it. Um, so let's just give it a, a couple of minutes time. Mm. Uh, we'll uh, go drink a coffee or something like that. Um, and we'll be right back. Yeah, should be six minutes, I guess. I'll just let it running. All right, we're back. And uh, sorry to keep you 20 minutes waiting. We just had to... We just lost ourselves uh, in the kitchen, yeah. kitchen uh, doing a coffee. So, um, yeah, I, normally this will take like seven minutes. You can try it out yourself. Uh, but here we, we are back and everything is green as promised. Nice. Okay, then let's actually get right to it, right? So, yeah, the next thing, uh, follow the, the getting started guide. Take a quick look at I, it. I want to freestyle, but... Okay, this was done. Oh, get paste... Yeah, just just go back to the getting getting started guide. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, data acquisition. Um, and now we come two point two, uh, the new point simulating incoming data through MQTT simulator. So let me proxy myself onto Node Red Pair. Oh, also a good point. Why are we using a proxy now? So through uh, Lens, Jeremy. Ah, yeah. So in the VM version, what uh, everything would have been exposed externally, but here we're using K three D. Um, also similar to Minikube, and there, by default, it's not exposing stuff outside of your computer. So what you need to do, if you want to access the internal services, you need to use the port forwarding feature. And this is what Alex just, just did. Me, this is what I need, I guess. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, this is about what I'm doing. Um, so I want to have some nice data inside my Node instance here, and because I can... We are, all inside this Kubernetes cluster, I can use the internal DNS addresses. Um, this should work. Topic like give me everything. And then directly piped into a debug node. Deploy. Nice. Ah, there is it like temperature, humidity, so temperature, pressure, humidity. Exactly. Just install the stack and it will be running by default. Let me grab. I think I'm feeling today that I want to use temperature. So let's exchange this for the right topic and directly. So now you just subscribe to the temperature yeah, yep. values. So how do I now get the topic? Um, database, no, messages. Oh, and this is also like a small uh, improvement of life. As you see, um, if you go back to messages on the left side, everything is, mm. is opened uh, by, by default. It will 
a little bit uh, yeah, life it's improvement. A, it's a trade of what do you want to expose first? Also, uh, balance between uh, you keep the overview versus you expose the information as soon as possible. So, yeah, now I think by default it's the second level that's open. Perfect. If you later take a look at guides, uh, you will see. So, as a side note, it's super important, like just like the small things that you really don't think are necessary, but if you have something and just throw it at us. So, hey, I could save two or three seconds here if you just expose this link here in the documentation. And not only you are benefiting, but also the whole community. So if you have some miscellaneous improvements, just throw it at us. So we are happy to to uh, integrate your feedbacks in. Um, so let me decode the JSON. or Unmarshal, I don't know what the right term is here. Unmarshal, yeah, whatever. Um, I, I don't need it, actually. It's a string. Unmarshal would be because it's not a JSON here. So let me paste. This is like the data model. So msg.payload is this. So, uh, so what Alex is now doing, he's converting this temperature to the data format of the United Manufacturing Hub. And you just took like an example message. Uh, and he is now converting the temperature to that data format. So now I have like the right data format. Now I need to put it into the right topic. So I just specify here um, msg.topic equals ER factory inside, which is the example, the, the, the default customer, no, factory cube, factory inside slash. We are in Aachen at the moment and this is my laptop. And now process value is the one that we want to publish into. You can find this also here you you can see that alex already did this 1000 times <laughs> quite, quite often as this is like very standard it mm. could be also be like opc ua on the left side and now you have yeah. to push it into into um, mqdt so alex yes, i've seen a lot <laughs> <laughs> because before i yeah because as i can now explain people what to do i needed to do it myself a lot a lot of times sometimes sitting uh, under a machine completely f covered in dust and just try to crunch the snow red notes together. Yeah, nice, working, cool. Let me push this back to the system. For this, I'm using the MQTT out node. This didn't, didn't work. This connect here, De delete this, double click here. So it, yeah, front end, um, it's connected. So it should be now we're inside the system. Yeah, and this is, uh, in the next couple of days and weeks, you will find like more tutorials on how you can exactly use these simulators. There will be additional simulators. So mm -hmm. for example, OPC UA simulator or like a PACML simulator um, so that you have more data to play around if you're just trying it out on your computer. So now I'm going into Grafana. You can find the credentials here. Username is admin, password is here. It will be automatically generated, so don't worry. And let's now take a look at the most exciting thing, the historian functionality. Let's create a dashboard. And now this is the old data source here, right? Yeah. And this is a new one. Okay, now factory inside, Aachen, default area, default production. About why it's default, Jeremy? Um, it's default because right now the MQT data model is still the same. So if you're sending messages there, everything will, will be in the default area and default production line. Mm. In the next couple of weeks, we will publish a new MQT topic structure as well, where you can start to change that as well. Yeah, cool. So, and don't worry, like it will be backwards compatible. So you have an old node red flows running still on the old data model. It will be just, just as easy as it's now here. So I get the temperature back and now I have aggregates, right? This is new. Yeah, exactly. I try to ref refresh exactly. And now the values are coming in. Give me like five minutes. So it's a little bit more. And now I want, so the sum of all values, nice, now in diff additional query, this is super important. Like if I now have uh, from a engineering process historian perspective, just to have some super easy, uh, for example, a sum could be then just the output of different counts or just counting yeah. something. And I want to have the sum over one minute, one hour, one day, one shift, whatever. So this could be easily be super useful then down the road for the process engineer. Cool. Also handling missing values, uh, yeah. this is also new. Um, this is also super important if you're just thinking back. So how do you trade off saving data versus um, make it easily consumable visually? So 
if you just have one data point here and you compare it to one data point um, that is updated really often, now you can just extrapolate the last value here and then just compare like to the new value and it's way easier than to work with the data. It, it was also coming from the community, so thanks for that. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. you have last observation carried forward. You also have like interpolation. Mm. Um, I think wouldn't. Yeah, because interpolate here last is zero. So yeah. Interpolate's now to zero. But I think the last one carry forward is really, really cool. And that's it with the with the new features. Uh, so we've taken a look at the new getting started guide. Mm -hmm. We took a look at the simulator and we've taken a look at the story and functionality. And as I already said, we're going to, to improve it in the uh, upcoming upcoming days and weeks. There are some smaller UI bugs uh, in the data storage, for example. There are And there will be many more that you will find <laughs> over the next month. So yeah, and uh, very likely there will some of them are already known and uh, until we publish it, we have already fixed um, fixed a couple of them, but you will probably find find yeah. more. Just feel free if you if you have anything, also feedback, feel free to join our Discord. And just just right there, there is a subchannel called development or support. You can decide if you have any feedback, just put it in there, and uh, it would we would be really happy uh, to to get your feedback and your opinion on this. Cool. All right. Yeah. So thank you for thank you for listening, and uh, see you see you in the next couple of weeks with another video. Bye.